Kathy from Arizona. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's not quite afternoon for you all yet in Arizona, but thank you for joining me. But it is a beautiful fall day here in Maryland, and I'm thinking in New Jersey, it probably is a beautiful fall day too. And so we're going to have a little bit of fun with fall today. My name is Beth Poss. I am the Director of Educational Programs with Lesson Picks. I'm a speech language pathologist and a special educator as well. Um, and I'm super happy to be here to do a little product spotlight on lesson picks today. I'm going to be sharing lots of really fun fall ideas and resources. There's a lot of, I have the link to the slides um, in the chat. Um, there's also a QR code on the slide deck. Um, and I'll post that again. I know some other people might be popping in. Um, as we're going, but there's lots of links to free resources in the slide deck, so feel free um, to go ahead and grab that. But we'll go ahead and get started. If anybody needs to get a hold of me personally, you can always reach out to me at beth at lessonpicks.com and the website for lesson picks, of course, is lessonpicks.com on there. Um, and I'll just go ahead and, and start diving in. Um, so, you know, get a little interaction in here right now. How do you use visuals in your classroom or in your learning? Um, setting or in your work setting. Um, so, you know, if anybody want to wants to kind of put in there some of the ways that you're using visuals, because that's what we're going to talk about today, is visuals, um, visual supports, visual based learning materials, resources, um, of course, that you can create in lesson picks, uh, but this may give you ideas. Um, love to hear ideas about how you're already using visuals. And I'll let you get in there and sort of type that um, type that up. Yep, whole class and individual visual specific to students. Um, let people have a moment or two to kind of put their ideas in mind. So keep keep putting in your um, ideas. By the way, this entire presentation is going to be filled with really bad fall puns. Um, so I'm just letting you write. I'm letting you know that right now that you're just going to little insight into my. Um, the sense of my sense of humor that my kids grown at. Um, and so, you know, it is unbelievable how visuals can support your learners. Um, and in lesson picks, you can create resources like visual schedules and communication boards, literacy supports, math supports, recipes, and so much more. And I do want to point out that all of these um, images that are in the slide deck are actually links two resources, many of which are free resources that you'll be able um, to download, even if you don't have a Lesson Picks account. And I will give you information um, at the end of our time today on what you know a Lesson Picks account cost, group information, and even possibly a, uh, a free demo, uh, access for a free trial with Lesson Picks. Um, so um, again, sticking with my really bad fall pun themes, um, there is a cornucopia of resources in Lesson Picks. We've got over 70,000 images and we're always adding to our image library. Um, you can customize images in order to reflect your learners or the individuals that you are supporting. So whether that's skin tone, clothing colors, whatever it might be, our our um, images are very customizable. We also have access in Lesson Picks to all of the Unity Lamp Words for Life symbols from Cranky Roman Corporation. Um, and so that is something that if you're creating low tech resources um, for individuals who are using um, a high tech system or you wanna create learning resources to support learning that vocabulary and that symbol set. It's very easy to do that in Lesson Picks. We have hundreds of templates um, for communication boards, visual schedules, games, math, literacy, fine motor. We've got our sharing center, which is just the bomb. Uh, you know, we know nobody has time. Educators, therapists, nobody has time to be creating resources. And as easy as it is to create resources in Lesson Picks, you should know that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of resources that are available just to download and use all for the same low cost, the $36 a year for an individual license. You can quickly create um, and uh, print resources as PDFs. Um, and also you can download resources as PowerPoint. We've got interactive play tools. 
um, Microsoft Word integration, our sound finder tool, and even high contrast images. Um, and you can also take any of our resources that you've created that download into PowerPoint and upload them into Google Slides as well for some interactive resources. But let's take a moment and just celebrate fall. Um, I have in here a free uh, download. Um, this is a, a fall book, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to download anything um, in Lesson Picks, including this. And you can see this is a free sample that's available here. If I want to use this, I'm simply going to click download that as a PDF. Um, and we'll go ahead and open that up just so that we can take a look and see. Um, and I've got, of course, I have a million other things open on in my in my. Uh, in my uh, Adobe, but that's okay. So we've got our fall walk book, right? So this is a free download. Anybody can download it, print it, use it as a resource with your students, right? I went for a walk, it's got a repetitive line. I went for a walk on a windy fall day. Um, I saw a cart full of apples along the way. This is about the extent of my authoring ability, right? Um, I could smell pumpkin pie in the air. The autumn wind blew leaves through my hair. I looked, so it's not, I'm sorry, it's not a repetitive line. It's a rhyming book. I looked with my eyes and saw pumpkins all around. I touched a pine cone that I found on the ground. And I won't continue to read that whole book to you, but for you guys to know that all of these is created with images in Lesson Picks, super easy to be able to use. Now, once we have a resource like this that you find that you can use, I'm going to show you how we can download this as a PowerPoint, how we can make changes to the format of this book, and how we can make more resources with those same amazing um, images, right? So we can do this all really quick in a very short amount of time. So I showed you how to download that as a um, as a PDF, but let's go ahead and just take a peek right here and look at this other download formats. When I click on that, it's actually going to allow me to download this as a PowerPoint file in one of three ways. And I, I will have a little bit of time to talk about what the different meanings are, but we're going to download this as a PowerPoint fixed plane. So what it's going to do, it's going to take that exact same, it's going to take that exact same uh, PDF book and just put it into PowerPoint. And why would we even want it in PowerPoint? Well, PowerPoint's gonna give us some additional um, features to it that are gonna allow it to be more interactive, allow us, I'm gonna enable editing, allow us to um, be able to use this, uh, to, to add narration to it if we wanted to make this, to make it switch accessible, right? Because it's so easy in PowerPoint to take anything and make it switch accessible. Um, and and be able to do some additional um, some additional things with it. So you can see it looks exactly the same. It's the same book. It is when it said PowerPoint fixed plane. This is just background images. This is not selectable text, right? It is not accessible text. We're gonna we can talk about some different ways that we can easily make this accessible text. But I do want to let you know when we downloaded this, these are simply images on the page. Now. I'm in PowerPoint, so I can easily um, record sound to go with this. So I can have that sound read aloud. I could also pull this into a tool like Kami. Uh, as a PDF, I can pull it easily into a tool like Kami, um, or uh, uh, which will then, excuse me, like Kami, which will then um, uh, be able to OCR that book and make it selectable text. And I can show you really quickly how to do that. I'm going to go just into Kami on my, uh, it's, a, it's an extension, uh, a Google extension. And so I'm just going to simply open Kami on my um, computer right now and just really quickly show you how I can make this into accessible text, right? It's not accessible right now, but we're going to go ahead and open a file from my computer because remember, I saved that PDF file up there and I'm going to go ahead and um, open it up from my computer, which should take me right in. Let's try that one more time. Open from my computer. There we go. Um, and let's go and make sure that we've got that fall. Where did it go? Documents. Let's see. Where did my fall? Should be in that folder, but I wasn't paying attention to it. I don't want PDF. So let's find um, my fall 
walk. Of course, I can't find it in my lesson picks examples. Let's just go into our downloads really quickly. Oh, there it is. Sorry, helps if I pay attention when I download something where it was supposed to be. So let's go ahead and open that on up, right? It's this PDF. We're gonna make a new copy of it. It's all good. I've done this demo a few times. And yes, you could absolutely do the same thing with Orbit Note, um, with Read and Write's um, PDF Reader, or with um, uh, Snap and Read, any of those any of those tools. Cami is just one that I know is available in a lot of schools. Um, and with Cami now, this is still a, it's still inaccessible. I have to OCR it. So just the features in Cami where I can do that text recognition right, where it's going to be able to, right, it's going to, makes me, makes me upload it, but that's okay. We'll just upload that. I'm going to authorize my Google Drive really quickly through this little short, short process. Please close this window to continue. And it's uploading it. And now what am, you're going to find, it's running that text recognition. I actually have that as, um, an accessible, it's going to be selectable text, right? So it's just an image when it's a PDF, but when we run it through something that has um, uh, optical character, so now because I can highlight it, I know, and and this has tools, as does Orbit Note and other ones, um, for being able to read aloud that text. And I won't go through that just so that you guys know, we can take something that was um, inaccessible and make it accessible that way. But let's head back into lesson picks. We've got our book. We're all excited about it. We can do all sorts of awesome things with it, but maybe we want to do something fun with the vocabulary that is in here, right? We've got some great fall vocabulary and maybe I want to make some follow-up materials. Well, I don't, I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can take something that's already be, been created and make something new with it. So I'm going to simply click right here. So we're in this fall block, right? free sample, anybody can, anybody can download it. What I'm going to show you next, you do need to be a Lesson Pick subscriber in order to do. But hang on until the end of the session because I'm going to give you a code for a free trial. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click load all right here. It's going to pop all of those images into my tray. The heart of Lesson Picks, the way that we create resources in Lesson Picks is simply by putting images into our tray. Now you can search from our, um, our clip art library of over 70,000 images. Um, for those images, you can add your own images to it. But right now we've simply taken these pictures and added them into our tray. And I actually have a little duplicate of one of them. So I'm just gonna take um, that first one out right, because I had a title page. So now I've got some fun images in my tray. I'm gonna go ahead and click create materials. And this time, maybe all I wanna have is, maybe I have like just a fun um, vocabulary game to go with this. So I'm actually gonna scroll on down. This is, you can see some of our different templates here, right? Some things as simple as picture cards or picture and word cards. So if I want to have that vocabulary labeled, um, I can do that. This is our books and stories template. That's what we used originally to create that book or story. Um, maybe I'm going to be taking data and want some tally cards on this, like, you know, my student's ability to uh, attend to the page or to read the text that's on there, whatever it is that I might be doing. Um, communication board. So if I wanted to put that into a communication board, but we're going to just a really quick, fun, simple learning um, uh, follow-up activity. And I actually, this is one of my favorite templates. It's our find the picture template. And it is simply going to uh, allow me to create a fun and easy um, picture search activity. So I'm going to click next. Um, I'm going to take out the text on there because I'm not worried about, I don't want the text for that, right? It's the text was in there is what I have in my, so I'm just going to take out the text. There's actually a feature I could just say, I don't want the text at all, but we'll just do it this way, right? So I'm not gonna have any of that text in there at all. Um, I'm gonna click next. This is gonna be find the fall pictures. And I get a drop down menu with all these different uh, backgrounds. And so since this is fall, I'm probably gonna pick either something like the autumn picture or the fall tree. I think I'm going to go for the fall tree. I think that's a really cute one. 
Um, we're gonna, I could have had just the image only for the key style, which is actually instead of that image in text, I'll just have that image. And I could even make this black and white. So, you know, we don't always have a lot of ink and maybe we're gonna do this as a coloring activity too. But I'm gonna just go ahead and keep it in color right now just to have it. And so this is gonna be a great, um, uh, visual spatial type activity where we're going to be searching for um, those images. And I can just simply download this as a PDF. And then with very little effort, I've got my fall book and I've got a follow-up activity to go with it, right? So now we've got our picture. Can you find the pictures? And they're going to be hidden um, in the trees, right? So we've got a fun fall activity, um, a, a follow-up activity to our book reading all ready to go. All right, let's go back because I've still got so much more to show you guys, right, um, in here. Um, let's talk a little bit about AAC support. Um, so we, I'm going back to my fall, my bad fall puns. We've got core vocabulary covered. So whether you're creating, need a low tech um, core board, perhaps you really need a backup um, board for an individual who has a complex body and needs to have a backup system for eye gaze. Um, and so these are already resources that are available in our sharing center, right? I mentioned our sharing center to you. These are free resources. Anybody can download these. You do not have to be a Lesson Pick subscriber to download anything that you see that has that free sample on there. And so this is a core board that is set up for a um, uh, uh, um, uh, 30, right there, we've got 36 pictures here where you're going to go based on, you're first gonna get the, the individual's gonna eye gaze based on that color. Actually, I have one of these right here. If you look at me for a second, um, that is uh, available, you're gonna based on the color and then based on the um, position of the word. So the really cool thing, and I'll just download this so that you can see it. The really cool thing about our eye gaze template is that, when you down, when you create it, or when you download it, right? This is what that this is what the AAC user is going to see. But when you're holding that up in front of them and you are looking at them through that eye gaze cutout area, you need to be able to know what the pictures are on the other side. And so all of our eye gaze boards, when they're created, they're actually double sided. So we've got what the user is seeing and what the communication partner is seeing, and you'll notice that it's a mirror image. Because when you put it together, when you put the two pages together, or if you print them back to front, you want it to be that mirror image, right? What they're seeing, that way it matches up so that what they're seeing on one side is exactly what you're seeing on the other side. If we just printed two pages of the same thing, it, would be, it wouldn't be in the right location. So that's a really cool feature of our um, eye gaze uh, template that we have. Um, if you just are looking for a basic core board, there's about a gazillion of them in the, literally a gazillion I counted, um, of them in the sharing center. But this is one that's really nicely color coded, 50 words um, based on um, uh, Project Core. It's a little more expanded than Project Core. We actually do have all of the Project Core um, communication boards available um, in our sharing center. Also, they're linked in the um, in the Project Core website, but you can also find them here. So if I were to type in Project Core into our thing, it would come up with, um, we've got some variations on them in here, but you can see we've got, here we go, the free samples of the Project Core um, Universal um, Core board and the different variations for different uh, for different sizes of it. So if you're looking for um, Project Core uh, boards for free, you can certainly find them in Lesson Picks as well. Let's keep going, right? Let's talk a little bit about visual schedules. Um, no Monday morning quarterbacking. We don't want let, to let transitions cause interference, right? We know our students really, uh, and many of our adult clients even really, do better when they have visual schedules. Raise your hand if you use a calendar, right? Or like me, I have my uh, to-do list. Um, but Lesson Picks allows us to create those visual supports with images. And they can be fun, right? They don't always have to be super boring. So they can be fun things like um, our touchdown template for our 
um, is one of our visual schedule templates is um, our touchdown, right? Make it a little bit fun when you get to, uh, when you've gotten through all of the tasks that you need to do, it's as if you've scored a touchdown. Um, it can also be for things, recipes or directions for different tasks, right? Breaking down a task. And so here's our pumpkin carving one. And again, that's a free sample. It might be the perfect thing that you need right now um, to be able to do it. And if you're ever looking at a resource that's in our sharing center and you're wondering what template did they use to create that? It's always gonna tell you right here. This is one of our picture schedule templates. Um, and so set up, uh, to go over those um, that that sequence of steps for pumpkin carving. Um, now, you might be working with individuals who have low vision or uh, cerebral cortical visual impairment, um, and we do have options for high contrast images in lesson picks. So let's head back into lesson picks and let's go kind of start at the very beginning and go into our clip art library. So here's our clip art library. It's organized um, in categories with images in folders. You can also always select images um, and search for any image in our image library. But let's go ahead and go into, um, uh, let's go into our holidays and seasons. We're gonna stick with this fall theme and go into autumn. And let's find an image that we might decide that we want to make as a high contrast image. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look maybe at a nice little, uh, let's just go with this like little pumpkin here. I like that one. I'm gonna select that pumpkin. Now, then nice picture there, but it's not high contrast. So I could click on the image. By the way, in order to put, if I wanted to use this image in a resource that I'm creating, I simply would click on the plus sign. It's gonna pop it in that tray, right? This is how I get images into my tray. But if I want to make this a high contrast image, I'm going to click right on that image and it's going to take us into our recolor and customize tool. Now, we're going to do a series of product spotlights with um, ATAC New Jersey uh, where we're going to um, do some short uh, some short uh, deep dives into different features of lesson picks. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Um, so I'll be able to go into a little bit more detail about how easy it is to customize images. But to make it high contrast, it's super easy. I'm going to click on our recolor and customize tool. And one of the options there is to add a high contrast filter. It's going to reduce the number of colors. It's going to brighten the symbol. It's going to add an outline to it. All I have to do is click add filters and it's going to it's going to do that, right? So it's brightened up that color. It's made it a little red, but that's okay. It's really not about the color necessarily as it is um, about uh, that giving it that high contrast. It's gonna give me that thicker black outline and the white outline, so make it pop there. And then if I needed a background to it, right? Many of our individuals who have high contrast needs um, also need a background. So right now it's a transparent background, but I can choose any color. Maybe the teacher of the visually impaired has said it needs to be blue or maybe it needs to be red. Let's just stick with black right now and I'm gonna update that. And now I have that high contrast pumpkin image, right? I can save that custom symbol and it's gonna be available to me to use um, in any resource that I create. It's also gonna show up everywhere, every folder, every place that that pumpkin is. So you can see using our breadcrumb trail right here that it's in a few different folders, right? It's in foods, in the fruits and vegetables, and it's in a couple of autumn folders and it's in, an, in, an, in a Halloween folder. But if I go back to that autumn folder, that's the one that we were in, I'm gonna see it right Right there, I've got my high contrast pumpkin image. So super easy to be able to create high contrast images. Um, now, any OTs out there in the group today or um, special educators who know that they do everything and are working on fine motor as well? Yay, Hope and OT, you are going to love this. We have so many awesome, um, and Karen's an OT, love it. Um, we have so many um, amazing, anybody get the pun there, right? Maze, corn, yeah, I'm trying my best. Uh, 
fine motor templates to work on cutting, tracing, drawing, um, all sorts of visual motor things. And so let's take a peek. I have to say this particular template is one of my all time favorites. So let's take a peek at that one, right? Again, if I want to know what template was used, um, this one is not a free sample. Lots of our things in here today are free samples. This one is not. Um, I think the Halloween maze one might be. Um, but if I wanted to know what particular template this was, it was using our cutting lines template. Um, and if I download this, just so you can see it, It's basically telling, retelling the story of the five little pumpkins, five little pumpkins sitting on a gate, but we're putting a fine motor component into it. And so maybe it's gonna be that they're gonna trace that line, draw on that line. Maybe it's gonna be that they're cutting on that line. Now, OTs out there, you guys might be thinking, you know, I've got students, they are not ready for those curved or those, um, or those zigzaggy lines. And that's okay, because if we wanted to change this, I'm gonna go ahead and clear my tray. If we wanted to change this, we could, it's super easy. I'm gonna just click on that load all. Remember, I put all of those images in my tray. I'm gonna click create materials and I'm gonna find that cutting links template. Um, this is actually a search bar here. So I'm just gonna put in cutting lines. It was cutting lines. Yep, we have two different ones, cutting links, cutting lines. And I'm gonna click click next. I'm going to keep that text right just the way that it is. I'm going to click next again. And this is going to be five little um, um, can spell it. And now I've got some different choices, right? Do I want them to all be straight lines? Do I want them to all be zigzag? Maybe I want one per page. So if I do this long zigzag, it's going to give me one per page. Maybe that's what's going to be work, is going to work for it. Or maybe I'm working on turning lines. That one might be kind of cute too. I can have different styles here, right? Dotted lines that I'm going to trace on, thick lines maybe that I'm going to cut on. Maybe I've got somebody who's really into um, transportation and I could use a road or a railroad track. We'll just do the dotted lines for right now. I think I'm going to go with the, I'll stick with that turn. That works well. I've got, uh, actually, you know what, I'm not, because it's going to be, that only gives me five per page, so it's going to be, I'm going to choose a different one. I'm just going to go with a straight one, right, just straight lines, and I'm going to go ahead and click finish, and I've just quickly and easily adapted that to be able to download that as a PDF um, and, uh, and have that available. There we go. Right, so changed it from this style to this style. And it literally took me seconds to do that. All right, let's go back over here. I think this one is free. Yeah, I made that one as a free. I was like, I know I tried to make as many of them as I could. So here's a free example of a maze for my OT friends. Um, all right, what else can we do in lesson picks? Any SLPs in the group today? Um, any SLPs out there in our group? Any of my fellow SLPs? Yes, Andrea, anyone else? You guys are gonna love this. Now, I realize lots of folks that are on here might be SLPs that are working on augmentative and alternative communication, but I bet you still have Arctic Kids on your caseload. And so the Sound Finder tool is the, hey, Mary Keeney, um, I've got my Arizona fans in here. I love it, awesome. So the Sound Finder tool is the quickest and easiest way to make resources for articulation in lesson picks. So let's head into it really quickly. And I'm gonna go hit my sound finder tool over here. It's a series of tools. There's actually the sound finder tool, a letter finder tool. Sound finder is gonna be based on the sounds in a word. Letter is gonna be based on a letter in a word. We've got rhymes with and minimal pairs as well, but we're gonna search for a word that um, has a sound. So I'm working on our tick with a student and maybe we are working on uh, those, e let's, I'm just trying to think of, of a good one. Um, maybe we're working on that initial P sound like in pumpkin. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in any word, any word at all that has the sound in it, doesn't matter like pumpkin, it's gonna spell it out in IPA. So all of my speechy friends are gonna be like, so cool, right? I'm gonna choose the phoneme, that P, um, that I wanna work on. And I'm gonna say, I wanna find it at the beginning of words. I could have it find it anywhere in the middle, at the end, it doesn't matter, but we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna look for it at the beginning of a word. I'm gonna, I now, 
This is what I do to myself. I don't test drive this in advance. So I have no idea what words are going to come up. I haven't searched for this particular one, but we're just going to go for it. All right, we got a lot of letter P's that we don't really need. Oh, but here we go. I'm going to clear my tray and let's find some words that um, that have, um, I think I'm not going to skip, I'm going to skip some of those, but let's do paw. I like that paw. Um, and we can have pay. And that's what paying for things looks like these days, right? And we can have peas. Now, this is a good place for me to point out our restricted images. Um, our restricted images are a set of images that might be a little bit more sensitive in nature, but that we may need in order to create visual supports, communication supports um, for individuals, right? They need to be able to understand and talk about all sorts of topics. But they are um, going to, if this is a more sensitive one, it may actually show the act of peeing perhaps. Um, and uh, it's a little bit more sensitive. You don't want that to come up like in the middle of something in a classroom where you might have it. So if I were to click on this and see it, which we're not gonna do right now, I would have to say, yes, I do really wanna see that image. And there's some different parameters that you can have for that, but we're not gonna include P in our um, in our, our tick thing, but we definitely are gonna include pi and we're not gonna include poo either. It's, I love it how I managed to just pick, you know, the one that was gonna give me P and poo, but that's okay. We might talk about a notepad right there, like a pad there. Um, Pam, like the, the cooking spray. And then we've got a pan, why not? Um, and a pot, that's a pot. But we let's do a pat. Um, and we've got a pen and we've got um, a pet. Oh, and I love this. One of my favorite things about lesson picks is that we really have diversity in our images. And so we wanna show everybody gets to have pets, including people who in wheelchairs. So I'm gonna use that. That's my pet there, right? Uh, let's see what other words. We're gonna get a, go ahead and get a pig um, and a pin, like a push pin. Um, and oh, look, a palm. We could have like pom-pom balls or we could have like the palm. Let's do pom-pom balls. Then we can have pop, right? Like that balloon went pop um, or it could be soda pop. We've got our pot there. I think I'm gonna go for this pot right here. Um, we've got a pug, love it. Um, and we could have a pup, um, we could have put. Let's go ahead and we could, let's use our high contrast to put there just because it's there for us. Uh, we're not gonna do a cigarette pack, but maybe we're gonna have pack like pack a, right? We've got images for adults, right? These are not just pictures for children. Okay, important, important to know, right? Um, a pail, right? Like a bucket or a pail. Um, let's get like one more picture, a pear. Oh, that one might be good too. Oh, but let's just do a palm. Okay, so I've got 20 pictures in my tray. I am ready to create something, right? How quick and easy. I didn't have to think about words that started with P. I just was able to go in there and do that. You know, at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and make, I'm gonna go back under my learning games. I love a good um, a good tic-tac-toe game. We also have dots and boxes. That's a really fun one to practice. But let's look at our tic-tac-toe game. I'm gonna click next. We've got all of our words in there. Um, everything looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I do wanna point out, it's not really relevant to the Arctic, but I do wanna point out, everything in Lesson Picks can be tricked excuse me, can be translated into any language that Google Translate supports. I'm not gonna do that for my Arctic. It wouldn't make sense, but think about my fall book. I wanna send that home. And I want the family whose home language is a different language than English to be able to read that at home with their child. I can easily translate it into that language. It uses Google Translate. It's going to be as good as or bad as Google Translate is. So it's always good to check it with a fluent speaker of that language. All right, let's go ahead and click next. We're gonna have this be initial P, tic-tac-toe. How many games do I want on a page? How much can my client um, manage in terms of visual and in terms of, or my student in terms of visual or in terms of fine motor? I'm gonna go ahead and put four pages, uh, four games on a page. I can show those image titles if I want to. I'm gonna click finish. And as easily as that, I have a really fun Arctic game ready uh, to go. Um, and so we'll just let that generate for a moment. 
and I can download that as a PDF um, and it's ready for me to be able to use. Ta-da! So we've got our, our tick ready to go. So we've got fine motor, our tick, language, all sorts of amazing things, including fun games. So your learners will have their eyes on the pies with fall games that they can play. So there's an example of a tic-tac-toe game, but we also have lots of traditional board game style games. So let's take a peek into this one real fast. I'm just checking my time. I think we're good. Once again, this is a free sample. You can download this as a PDF and have it ready to go. It's got lots of fun fall vocabulary in it. Halloween fun ball vocabulary. But let's talk about that other download formats one more time. And this time we're gonna choose that PowerPoint fixed with tokens. And I'm gonna show you something super cool and amazing because we're gonna use this not just as a, um, not just as a, a, a no tech, you know, it's, we wanna make this interactive. We've got uh, certainly still opportunities that we might be doing virtual services for students, teletherapy, or we may just wanna be able to project this on our interactive whiteboard and have the entire class involved in a game. Um, everything I'm gonna show you right now in PowerPoint, know that you can also do in Google Slides. So we've got our game board. These, remember, it's fixed. It doesn't move around. It is the same thing as it was before, but this gives me some images that I can use as my game board pieces. And these images actually move around. And then I usually like to get rid of the extra ones just because it's just visually distracting. And because it's digital, I can blow this up because my eyes are old and I cannot see. Um, and so, right, I can't see those teeny tiny pictures. Um, on, an, on the interactive whiteboard, I might be fine. Um, now, right, I, this is a shoots and ladder style game. So notice, you know, if we get to the leaves, we're gonna get to go up. If we hit that jack-o-lantern, we have to slide down. How do we actually play this as a digital resource though? What I'm gonna show you next is our lesson picks PowerPoint add-in. Um, there is a little setup that goes with it. We can talk about that more in a, um, a focused uh, spotlight on our digital resources. But right now I'm just gonna pull it up where I actually get to open lesson picks right inside. I can't talk and type at the same time. Right inside my PowerPoint. So I'm logging into my lesson picks account. Look, I've got those images in my tray that I use to create that other activity, that P activity. It doesn't matter. Although I, just to let you know, I can actually click on any of these images and they would pop out. There's a whole lot more I can do with this that we won't have time to talk about. We're just gonna talk really quickly about this last tab, which is a play tab that gives me some different tools. I just want a spinner to go with this, not with the images in my tray, just with numbers. I'm gonna select create game and look, can spin the wheel. And my uh, students can move their game board pieces. Apple cart, right? We can talk about an apple cart, all of that. We get to take our turns. Think of the language that we could use with this, right? Um, are we able to edit the icons on this game if we bought them? So yes, yeah, so, and absolutely. If you were, uh, if you're a Lesson Picks, um, if you are a Lesson Picks subscriber, you can make your own games. I could make, I could create, I'll just take you in and show you how easy it is. I could either load all of those images up and take something out and put something else in, or I can simply, I've got a bunch of images in my tray, all of those P word images. Um, create materials. I'm going to go down to our games, right? Here's our game board templates. Choose that, right? Uh, initial P, initial P game. I know I spelled initial wrong. Initial P game. And then I actually have all of these different choices of game board themes that I can choose from, right? So, you know, we can do the Halloween one, but maybe... You know, we want a pirate themed game instead. I'll just pick the hollow. Oh, yeah, why not? I'll pick the pirate one just because, just because. Um, I can go ahead and click finish. And as easily as that, I have created my own custom game with exactly the images that I want. So you can use a ready-made game that's already there. I could download, if I choose that other download formats, I can pull it into PowerPoint, um, or I might just want to print this and play it with some game board pieces and a dice that I have um, available. And so, yep, super easy to be able to make whatever 
kind of games that you want with the images in your tray. So great question. Thank you, Anne. All right. So we've got um, our, our, um, our games. Um, literacy, don't leave any golden goblins behind. If your school district uses, first of all, there are tons of literacy um, resources within lesson picks. But I do want to point out if your school district uses um, Retopia or Retopia Go from uh, Building Wings, we have lots of resources. We have partnered with them and we have lots of resources that are available to complement that curriculum, including a completely free um, core and fringe board set. So we've got our core vocabulary board, that's the project core core board with um, 29 pages of fringe vocabulary that goes together with it. It's all available free for anybody to download. And this particular system was designed specifically for us by Karen Erickson and Caroline Musselwhite. So Dr. Karen Erickson and Dr. Caroline Musselwhite, two um, real experts in the field of literacy um, and emergent literacy uh, for individuals with complex communication needs. So lots of resources that are available um, for uh, you to be able to use with that. Um, I wanna be able to wrap up and ask, um, take get some questions from you guys. So just, um, so it, it, can we download it as a JPEG? It would make it easier to use as a background in slides. When you download it, great question, um, Janet. When you download it as a PDF, excuse me, when you download it as a PowerPoint, you could actually save those as um, JPEGs, but even easier, you can simply, so let's, whoops, is that what I wanted to do? Hang on, as I, you can simply, let's, let's go, um, you can simply, right, if I have this, I can simply, I could simply upload this to Google Slides, and then these would be backgrounds. We also have um, the ability, and I wasn't sure, I'm not sure if you were specifically talking, let's get my, my slides back up here. I wasn't sure if you're specifically talking about our images um, or everything that you have. So everything that you create, you can either download it as a, um, think about the game board. So if you download it as a, um, if you download it as a PowerPoint, it will, you can just literally upload that into slides and it'll be there ready to use as a background in slides. And what I showed you as far as those game uh, play tools in PowerPoint, those are also available in Google Slides. And there's uh, tutorials for how that, yeah, perfect, good. All right, just a couple more things and then I'm available for any other questions that you might have. We don't wanna leave math out, right? We've talked about communication, visual schedules, literacy, but we don't wanna leave math out. Tons and tons of different math resources that you can quickly and easily make. One of my favorites is the clothespin cards template. Um, makes it super easy to be able to create math activities. Um, this one is not a free download. Did I make this one free download? This one is a free sample. So this is um, more of a pattern activity. Um, and this one is our clothespin card activity, which is going to allow you to do some counting with your students. So don't forget about math, right? One, boo, three, four. Um, a little surprise for everybody here. Um, a, this is a free 30-day trial for the first 100 people that use this link. Let me copy that link. Uh, copy that link. Let me copy that link and put it in the chat so that people have it. Um, this will allow you to sign up for a free 30 day trial. It is for the first 100 people. So all of you here can have it. If you wanna share it with somebody else, that's okay too. Um, it's gonna max out at 100. And when it hits 100 people that have used that link, the link will not work any, uh, any longer. So just be judicious if you choose to share that link um, so that other people can have access to it. So the folks that, for example, that um, didn't get to watch this live and are planning on watching the video. Um, but that will give everybody a free trial um, to use Lesson Picks and, and see how it works for you. But personally, I think any uh, purchase of Lesson Picks is a real touchdown. We have group licensing information, a single license, um, and licenses up to nine in a group 
are $36 a year. This is an individual license. It is a one user per person license. It's not, let me buy one license and share it with all the SLPs in my building or all the SLPs in my district. It is one SLP, one license. Um, we keep the price really low, however, and we offer group discounts. So for 10 to 24 licenses, there's a 10% um, discount. So when you hit 10 licenses, you get a 10% discount. When you've hit 25 licenses, you get a 15% discount. And when you hit 100 more licenses, there is a 20% discount. For all of our groups, we offer free training. So I would come on or one of our um, other trainers would come on and be able to do um, a live virtual webinar at no cost to you. We can even do in person if we happen to be for free, if we happen to be in your neck of the woods um, on a, at, a certain, um, at a certain time and we can make that work for you. But most of the time we do these as, um, as virtual trainings. Um, there's more information on licensing if you uh, send us an email at licensing at lessonpicks.com. We are also able uh, to, um, uh, uh, to uh, work with, we're starting to be able to work with um, uh, um, single sign on things like if you use clever and things like that. Um, it's very nice in Arizona in the winter. I know I need a reason to come out there, don't I, um, Mary Keeney and, and do, um, and do a training with you. Maybe for if Caroline does AAC in the desert again next year, it'll put me out in your neck of the woods and we can plan something. Um, so I am available for questions. I was trying to keep this at 45 minutes or less and we've hit 45 minutes, but I'm not in a rush. So I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody may have about lesson picks or about anything in my presentation that you have questions about. Um, I appreciate the questions and the interactivity um, already. And I appreciate everybody's patience with my, um, with my puns um, as well. Um, so lots of, uh, Lots of, you know, you guys were much better than my kids. They'd be, they would have been in here groaning um, and complaining. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, I will uh, put the link for the slides in just one last time, since there are lots of links in there for free resources. So for anybody that didn't get that, here's the link for the slide deck. Yes, you can use your own pictures, Ken. Great question. So, um, we didn't quite go into all the details of creating things, but on the Your Lesson Picks page, which is where you end, where you land when you open your Lesson Picks, uh, when you log into your Lesson Picks account, you have the ability to manually upload your own photos. There's also lots of other ways that you can create custom images, but you can absolutely use your own um, pictures as well. So thank you, Laura. I appreciate it. Um, and I do appreciate my friends out in Arizona joining me this morning. Any other questions, I'm happy to answer, but I also know that lots of you guys took time out of your day and you have a, you ate your lunch with me and you have other things that you need to do. Um, Naomi, I don't know if there's anything that you need to say um, to anybody on here. We are gonna hopefully make this a, an ongoing series of, um, an ongoing series of, oh, you're having a Beth watch party, I love it. Um, we're gonna hopefully make this an ongoing series of, product spotlights where we'll dig a little deeper into some of the really exciting features of lesson picks on an ongoing basis um, with uh, ATAC New Jersey. So thank you so much to Naomi and, and to um, Mike Barada who did not make it on this, um, on this, uh, on this webinar today for um, inviting me and all the other amazing vendors that you guys um, invite on to share um, our wonderful products with you. So hello, New Jersey. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Janet. Jersey appreciates me. You're very welcome. So I'll be quiet, but I'll hang out for another minute or two in case anybody has questions. Beth, yes. as usual, you were awesome. This I never realized how much Lesson Picks could do. This is going to be an awesome series. Thank you. I'm super excited to do it. And well, I, I'm always happy to get out to New Jersey live if I'm not, if I don't get sick. Um, it's, 
I do drive through New Jersey at least about once every six weeks on my way up to New York to visit my daughter. So, you know, folks of you in New Jersey, we probably could work out an in-person training if your district or your um, setting is looking at purchasing a group license and would like training to go along with that. So Naomi, whenever you need to, I'll let you close out the meeting, but thank you everybody so much. Last chance to ask your final questions. Any final questions, anyone? If not, thank you everyone for joining. And as always, thank you, Bash. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you guys so much.